away. <laughs> Royce O'Neal, Corey Jefferson, and Isaiah Austin. Boy, the size of the bear is going to be tough for the Horn Frogs to deal with today. So we check out our keys to the game, the principal financial group edge of the game. In our previous two meetings, TCU just got destroyed on the boards, and Ken Anderson didn't give you points, but who else is going to step up? No Emmerich Fields. Kavar Shepard is who needs to have a big game. Baylor is so much better. When they have more assists than the opponent, they are 12-0, and when they win points in the paint, they are very difficult to beat. You know, Kean Anderson has scored 20 or more points in eight of his last 13 games. He's going to have to maybe have a career game today for the Horn Frogs, who lost twice to the Bears. Not only lost, but lost in a big way. They lost to Baylor 88 to 62. They were out-rebounded by 29 in that game. They lost to Baylor 91 to 58 in Waco. In fact, it's the uh, biggest margin of victory for the Bears all season long. And in that game, the Bears out-rebounded them by 27. Scott Drew is the head coach of the Bears in his 11th year. How about this? They're going to go to their fourth NCAA tournament in the last seven years. You know how many they went to before that streak? Four. That is amazing. So four in the last seven, and they went to four in their previous history before that streak. 20-plus wins, six out of the last seven years for Scott Drew prior to his arrival in the history of Baylor basketball. Only three times have the Bears won over 20 games in a season. And remember, that first year, he didn't even get to play a conference game. They were suspended throughout. Now, Trent Johnson, second year as the head coach at TCU. It's been a tough year, really tough. They have lost 18 straight games. They're the first team in Big 12 history to go 0-18. There have been a couple of others that have not won a game in Big 12 play, but they went 0-16. So he knows he's been playing with a short deck this year. They've lost a lot of players to injuries, including now Amrit Fields, who was a starter just six games ago, but he is out with a knee injury, and he is sitting over there uh, along with Delonte Abrams and uh, the, they have four other guys that have stayed back in Fort Worth right now that didn't even make this trip to Kansas City. So they have been playing without certainly a full strength and we'll see what they can do today against the Bears. Only four of the Horn Frogs out of the 16 on the roster have played in every game. So Baylor's got the ball first in their white uniforms and TCU in their purple. TCU. Zone defense for TCU. You expect to see a lot of zone. Baylor will play a 2-3, and they'll do a lot of different things out of it. TCU more of a traditional 2-3 zone. Austin, little fadeaway that won't go. But there's Jefferson with a rebound. Oh, man, that was unlucky. Kavar Shepard rips it away. As good as Kean Anderson has been this year, he has been especially outstanding in the first half. Mm -hmm. He's had some very big games against Baylor. Had 18 points in the first half on the way to 29. Price, he goes in with a strong left hand, but Isaiah Austin, who's the best shot blocker in the conference, bothered that one. He didn't block it, but he bothered it. Kenny Cherry, who was out with uh, Turchel, only missed one game. Played hurt, though, for two or three games. Cherry gives it up. O'Neal takes a three and nails it. Royce O'Neal, a 44% three-point shooter. Pretty good execution by Royce O'Neal and his teammates. They did a double L post-entry, and they dove, and that brought the forward down and left Royce O'Neal sitting out there by himself. Here's a trap out of the 2-3. TC does a good job to get inside, but again, there's that presence. Heslip looked for a second, but Kean Anderson got to him. So much of postseason, Dave, comes down to matchups, and this is just on paper a miserable matchup for TCU. Rich Jefferson lost the handle, but he was fouled by Price. When you look at the Baylor scoring breakdown, Corey Jefferson leading the way, and then they've got Kenny Cherry and Brady Heslip, the two Canadians, Isaiah Austin averaging 11 a game, and then Royce O'Neal. In depth and balance, Scott Drew gets great production off of the bench. The two previous meetings, the Baylor Bears have had five players in double-figure scoring in both previous matchups. You know, one thing Scott Drew's happy about is Corey Jefferson starting to play his best yeah. basketball. 
He's had double doubles in four of his last seven games. Quick start for Baylor, up 5 nothing. Corey Jefferson coming up way high on the back side of that 2-3, leaving the short corner open. Good pass. Open look for Brandon Parrish, but he can't find the target. There's Hessler. Count it. A 46% three-point shooter. In transition, if you're not finding Brady Hessler, then you didn't pay attention during the scouting report because <laughs> that is where he is at his best and simply cannot let that young man stand out there and look at the basket. Good pass inside to Shepard. Nice play from Shepard as he gets inside for two from Price. First two of the game for the Horn Frogs. Austin, good pass. Boy, that was a great look from Austin to Jefferson. Well, that's 7-1 passing to 6-10 and yeah. get that ball high. And when you can get effective post-to-post Passing it is a very difficult team to stop. And quite simply, TCU doesn't have a second big guy they can go with. Shepard's the only big guy they have, and he's fouled on the play by Austin. In transition, you've got to find players and match up. Look at Brady down at the bottom of your screen. He's running completely uncontested. I mean, you talk about standing there all by himself, and you give him that much time and space, and uh, he is going to shoot about 80% out there if you let him set his feet. I think he set his feet, lined up the seams, took a deep breath, and then fired. Licked his finger. <laughs> Checked the sure air. for wind currents. <laughs> See what the air conditioning's doing inside the building. He has had a remarkable season shooting that basketball. 45% yeah, from the floor and a 46% three-point shooter. 85. Wow. That was a perfect pass from Kenny Cherry. You know, Cherry tried to play hockey. His parents, they moved from Haiti. He played hockey for one year, so they enough of that and took up basketball. He made a good career choice. Of course, you're Canadian, you have to try hockey. That time, Parrish was able to get out on Brady Heslip. Shot clock is down to 11. Heslip given a sliver of a time, and he's two for two. And just almost a perfect start for the Baylor Bears to this basketball game. They are scoring inside, and Brady Heslip knocking down threes. So Trent Johnson calls a timeout, and I think what he is going to say is, didn't we talk about this in the scouting report? That guy can shoot. Now they're having problems defending inside and outside. Watch at the bottom of your screen, and a nice little jam in there. You see Isaiah Austin come in and screen. It's an X action crossing and leaves Corey Jefferson all by himself, and then you shut down the inside, and Brady Heslip knocking down shots. Well, so far, Baylor is three for three from three-point range. Heslip has two of those. Heslip, uh, he scored 24 points the last time these two clubs went head-to-head. -head. And you look at his career overall, and this year averaging 11 and a half a game, and again at 100 three-point field goals made. Well, the second-best single season is shooting the three in the history of the Big 12, trailed only Keaton Page at the end of regular season. He got some good experience playing for the Canadian national team this last summer. Anderson hasn't even looked to shoot yet. Jarvis Ray, he's playing his best basketball right now. Ray pulls up and throws up an air ball. It did not hit the rim. Shot clock at one. Anderson didn't realize it until late, and then nails a three. Wow. A good presence of mind to look up. If you're Keyan Anderson, he's dribbling that ball. Had no idea the shot clock was down to two. Put that in your playbook. And the ball will go out of bounds. So, Kean Anderson 
looks up and sees one second on the shot clock. Uh-oh, I better fire. And we're back after this from our friends at Phillips 66. It's 1.54 p.m. and 97 degrees. Officer Martinez is on the case. First sprinkles. Monica will get the message. Eric will see the light. A very tiny light. And when this happens, we'll be here. Fueling the neighborhood with performance gas and just about everything else, like we have been for the past 80 years. Phillips 66, proud to be here. Man, these honey mustard and Swiss chicken sandwiches good or what? Sonic totally scored with this yeah. flavor, man. It's like Swiss. No, it's swish. No, the sound a basketball makes going through a yeah. net? Swish is Swiss. the sound. Swish is the sound of the ball it's going through the net. Swish. Uh, okay, why don't we settle this over a game of horse? Yeah, try horse. Okay, why don't we settle this over a game of horse? Did you hear the news? Honey mustard and Swiss chicken sandwiches are here. And start your day with a 99 cent morning drink stop. This is how you sonic. Tonight's Big 12 Network game is brought to you by Phillips 66. Proud to be here. Geico, 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Buick, visit your local Buick dealer to see why thousands of people are switching to Buick. The Principal Financial Group can help build, grow, and protect your financial future. Whataburger, swing by Whataburger today to pick up the newest all-time favorite, the Monterey Melts. And by Bonage. When you look outside the Sprint Center and the Power and Light District, and uh, this is a live look. Beautiful weather here in Kansas City. Tomorrow's going to be a special day. There'll be 30,000 people over there. Right now, it's Baylor leading 15 to 6. The latest dish brought to you by Dish Network. And some news and notes from the Big 12 conferences. The Jayhawks wrap up yet another Big 12 title, their 10th straight, which is the third longest streak in NCAA history. Joel Embiid, though, is likely out for a couple of weeks with a back injury. Melvin Edgem of Iowa State named the Big 12 Player of the Year. And the Big 12 Conference is going to get seven teams and maybe eight yeah, if West was, Virginia yeah, can make a run in this Big 12 championship. I was just about to say, people are selling West Virginia short and acting like they're out of it, and they are not. They finished 9-9 nine and nine in the best conference in America, and they absolutely still have a chance to get in. The problem for West Virginia is they didn't do enough work in the non-conference portion of their schedule because they did finish 9-9 nine and nine in the toughest RPI league in the country. The problem for them was what they didn't do in November and December. But they can make a, a little bit of a run here in the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. I don't think they have to win it, but I think if they get to the championship game, I think they're in. I agree. I, I don't know that they have to go that far, but, you know, they've got to win one. They've got to beat Texas. Uh, you beat Texas, and then suddenly you've got a really good argument to be mm -hmm. in. West Virginia looked really good last Saturday, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Here's Jarvis Ray. And he throws it away. Here's Torian Prince, and he loses the handle. Come back the other way. Ray throws up a three. Nope. Gets his own rebound. No. Rico gathers. Prince just puts his head down, goes to the basket, and is fouled. This one is on Hudson Price. Almost a perfect start for the Baylor Bears to this basketball game. They are perfect from the three-point line. They are perfect from the free throw line and shooting above 70% from the floor here in the first six minutes. Torian Prince, a guy who is a sophomore from San Antonio. He actually worked his well way into the starting lineup. And uh, against TCU, scored 23 points in that game, which is a career high for him. 
And hits both free throws here. Kavar Shepard can't hit from the short corner. Uh, picked off, though, by Anderson. Interesting, Anderson's really not looking to score right now, looking to do stuff like that, get his teammates involved. Yeah, boy, they, the ball goes inside for TCU, and I'm not sure they've gotten the ball up above the rim yet. Mm. Inside Austin, and he's fouled. Jarvis Ray. Well, that play set up by a nice diagonal screen by Gary Franklin. Set a back screen for Isaiah Alston diving along the baseline. And Gary Franklin, big, strong guy. Watch him at the bottom of your screen put his body up on the offensive play, defensive player. And Jarvis Ray got a nice screen and no help. Nice play by Gary Franklin. Isaiah Austin. Holly Rowe broke the story about Isaiah Austin with his right eye problems in middle school where he had a torn retina, does not see out of that right eye, playing with uh, no vision out of the right eye. And, you know, I, I think just the courage of that young man and the way he has played. And uh, for anybody who has ever, ever questioned his, his work ethic, his tenacity, his courage. His uh, toughness. His toughness, all you, of that. You were wrong. You were wrong. Nice three-pointer by Christian Gore. And just his 11th three-point field goal of the season. And that gets TCU back to within 11. TCU's gotten out of that 2-3 zone, now going man-to-man. -man. Gore, good defense on Hessler. Rico gathered. That's a tough shot by Rico. It was good defense by mm -hmm. Kamar Shepard playing belly up defense. He didn't give up any inch at all. And Rico gathers just going right through him with the strength. Gores looked like he got poked in the eye. That ball kicked. Reach up the shot clock to 15. Gore will go over to the bench. It looked like he got poked in the eye just a bit. Baylor's leading it 22 to 9. We're cooking dinner. Dinner is the most important meal of the day. We can cater to everybody's needs, whether you want a burger, whether you want chicken. Dinner's special for me and my family because it's the one meal out of the day that we get to spend together. It's the perfect end to a good day. Win or lose, we're coming to Whataburger after a game. Whataburger for dinner. If we're not on your way home, you're going the wrong way. My name is Tatiana, and I would love to cook you dinner. Starting route now. Exit in one quarter mile. Bear toward the right in 500. Make that 100 feet. Take a right-hand turn in. Wow, that came up quick. In a quarter mile, take a left on. You are ahead of me. Prepare to take a left onto Broad. Are you doing that on purpose? Your final destination is coming up at... Never mind, we're here. Navigate your route quicker. Phew. The new Regal from Buick. Take that, Jersey Tucker. <laughs> That's a technical, Sunshine. You know the rules. We play hard, but we don't play dirty. A good sport shakes hands, win or lose. So get back out there and make good. Sorry, man. I got next round. Hey, drinks on this guy. Grab a seat. The game is on. Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. Hey, what about me? Championship Week, presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. 
And there's the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship bracket. We've seen Oklahoma State already win big over Texas Tech. 80 to 62, Marcus Smart was brilliant in the game. So too was Markel Brown who led the way with 20 points. Baylor taking on TCU. Good break so far for the Bears out of the gate. Now Kansas and Oklahoma State will play tomorrow. Iowa State, Kansas State, Oklahoma waiting the winner of this one. And uh, boy, this is Big 12 country. We're going to have quite a quarterfinal Thursday, aren't we? You look at those four games or potential matchups, and hard, you'd be hard pressed to pick which one you're looking the most forward to seeing. Yeah. Well, you look at it, and if Baylor wins this game, seven of the eight teams already locks for the NCAA tournament, and the eighth is trying to get in. That's who's playing tomorrow. How about that? It's a pretty good afternoon and evening of basketball. And both teams playing giveaway, and that's a charge. Jarvis Ray stood his ground. That's not easy to do with Rico Gathers coming at you. It would be awful easy to turn your shoulders if you're Jarvis Ray and just let that one go. <laughs> yeah. Well, he is a wide load. Nice defensive play by Jarvis. Now, TCU needs to do better attacking this 2-3 zone. They need to get the ball to the elbows and the short corners and really attack this zone defense. A little unlucky for Brandon Parrish and the rebound to Gathers. And that is now 11 to three on the boards. Three pointer no good by Gary Franklin. Ball goes out of bounds, it'll belong to TCU. And we give Kenny Cherry, and rightfully so, a lot of credit for the resurgence of the Bears, but I think a part of it, too, is the play of Corey Jefferson. No question. No, there's no question. You talked about that he had double-doubles in four out of the last seven. Those were four consecutive double-doubles, and during that stretch, he was averaging 17 points and nine rebounds. He has been outstanding. And that'll be a charge. He draws the charge here. Hey, today's game brought to you by Puerto Rico Tourism Company. Live your own star vacation story. Puerto Rico, the all-star island. Visit CPuertoRico.com. Yeah, Kenny Cherry in this game. I mean, how about the game he just, you just saw it, didn't you? In Manhattan, 29 points. How special was that? Career high. The last four minutes of that game, he was a perfect 10 of 10 from the free throw line. And this young man has struggled shooting from the free throw line. Went into that game shooting about 55%. And well, he was just money. Alley-oop. And good defense by Kavar Shepard to kind of blow up that play. You know, in that game, the Bears won by two. And they hit their last 17 free throws in the last three minutes of that contest. They hit 17 in a row. That will win you some basketball Yes, games. it will. Ray, boy Ray, since the injury to Amrick Fields, has really played his best basketball. I just saw him score 18 points the other day against Oklahoma. He's coming off consecutive double-doubles the last two games against West Virginia, 13 and 13. Against Texas, he had 10 and 11, so you're exactly right. He's playing his best. Sometimes that happens to seniors. Yeah. They, they see the end of their time coming, and they can feel the clock ticking. Heslip. It was a guarded three, tough shot, long rebound, Baylor. Oh, good pass. What a pass by Cherry. It was set up by the hesitation. He came off that on-the-ball screen, got down there about to the post, to the, to the block, and hesitated a little bit like he was going to shoot a jump hook, a little running floater, and that brought the defense to him. And, Good strong finish by Rico Gallagher. Unfair to try to compare him to Pierre Jackson. Yeah, I, you know, I've heard people say that, and they're just two completely different players. Right. Both very effective, and, but I, I just I don't see similarities between those mm -hmm. two. Gore, another three. Got it. That's two for two for Christian Gore. He came into the game averaging four points and had just made ten three-point field goals. Now has six points and knocked down two from behind the line. In the first two games against Baylor, scored a total of three points. O'Neal inside. And that was partially blocked by Ray. 
Jefferson gets it back, though. No mistake about that one. Corey Jefferson was a preseason All Big 12 first team selection by the coaches. And quite frankly, during that losing streak when they were 2 and 8, Corey Jefferson was not playing like a first team All Conference player. Since then, going 7 and 1, he has been as good as anybody in this league. He has eight points in this game. Comes all the way out to Anderson. Anderson able to knife his way in there, but Jefferson might have gotten a piece of that. Tipped away, all by his lonesome Anderson. This is the type of game for Baylor that's going to require some mental toughness. You know, they're going to have to concentrate and focus and keep their foot jammed down on the accelerator, and that's going to be a test. Jefferson gets his own miss. And a foul on the play will put Jefferson at the line when we come back. Now the Baylor Bears shooting a high percentage, especially Rico Gathers and Corey Jefferson attacking the room for the Baylor Bears. Cod, North Pacific. Fish, non-specific. Huh. Never been there. You want great fish? It's got to be Wendy's. 100% premium cod with a light panko breading. Now that's better. Cod, North Pacific. Fish, non-specific. Huh, never been there. You want great fish? It's got to be Wendy's. 100% premium cod with a light panko breading. Now that's better. This is the Quicksilver Cashback card from Capital One. It's not the juggle a bunch of rotating categories card. It's not the sign up for rewards each quarter card. It's the no games, no messing around, no earning limit having, do I look like I'm joking, turbo boosting heavyweight champion of the world! Cashback card. This is the Quicksilver Cashback card from Capital One. Unlimited 1.5% cashback on every purchase, everywhere, every single day. Now tell me, what's in your wallet? Starting route now. Exit in one quarter mile. Bear toward the right in 500. Make that 100 feet. Take a right hand turn and wow, that came up quick. In a quarter mile, take a left on. You are ahead of me. Prepare to take a left on to Brock. Are you doing that on purpose? Your final destination is coming up and. Never mind, we're here. Navigate your route quicker. Phew. The new Regal from Buick. Kellen? You coming? You coming? Yeah. Instigators, ring leaders, enablers. You make what happens here happen. Phillips 66 Big 12 Tournament, part of Championship Week, presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Baylor with a 10-point advantage so far. Let's take a look at tonight's Wendy's Wooden Watch. And we were talking about it in the first game, about Doug McDermott and what a season he has had. He's already been named the Big East Player of the Year, averaging 26 and a half points a game. He's gone over 3,000 points in his unbelievable career. Good for him. We talk about Brady Heslip and Phil Forte and all the great shooters in the Big 12. How about Doug McDermott shooting 45% from behind the three-point line and adding seven rebounds to go? And you know, what a historical season for Doug McDermott. You know, happy for him. You know, yeah, we, we got absolutely. to know Doug McDermott when he was the coach at Iowa State about the time that Doug was growing up and he and, you know, the times that he'd be at Iowa State and playing with those guys. I remember Greg McDermott telling me, you know, I just don't know if he can play Division I basketball or not. <laughs> hey, hey, Dad, you, you, yeah. you missed out early on that one. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> a neat story. By the way, Jefferson with 10 points now, yeah. You look at Doug McDermott, and uh, I think he translates to that next level very, very well. He's one of those guys that's so smart and can hurt you both inside and out. So good for him. We were 
talking about the uh, next level and certainly NBA scouts will be filtering through the Sprint Center this weekend. Flip Saunders uh, is here and uh, he'll be joined by at least 25 NBA scouts this weekend. It'll be checking out all the brilliant talent in this conference. And some are speculating that the GM of the Timberwolves might not only be looking for players, he might be looking for a coach as well. Oh. Are you going to go out on a limb and make a bold prediction or something? I am not. I'm just telling you what Flip was looking for. All right. Well, right now he's watching Baylor with a 12 point advantage over TCU. Again, the Bears have already clobbered the Horn Frogs twice this year. Winning the last time 91 to 58. That's what you were talking about that mental toughness. It's yeah. going to take Because you could say to the players all you want about how you've got to do this and you've got to do this, but they remember right no, Absolutely. I, I mean right now Every seems like every time down we hear that rim snap because mm -hmm. another Bears dunking the ball to finish a play Yeah, boy Jefferson's having himself quite a half. He already has 12 points and seven rebounds And by the way, the rebound edge already, we've talked about it, one of your keys, 18 to 4 in favor oh of the Bears. My. I mean, it's just staggering. These two teams played, and Baylor won by an average of 30 points per game and out rebounded them by an average of 28 rebounds. Jefferson throws it out of the left hand, and O'Neill is there to pick up the loose change. Well, TCU needs to move the ball side to side. They need to attack gaps. They can't be content just to throw it around the perimeter. Get that ball to the elbow, get it to the short corner, but attack gaps, force this zone to contract and expand, contract and expand, and then you'll have some scoring opportunities. Yeah, if the ball gets stuck, then the zone doesn't have to move. There's a good penetration by Anderson. Ray goes in and gets fouled. Well, we invite you to play basket pong at Phillips 66. Chance to win prizes instantly and shoot for $66,000. Phillips 66, proud to be here. And boy, are they ever here at the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. And I know Doug Bell is waiting in the wings to play Bob Barker and get all set for the finals of basket pong this yeah. year. Look what Jarvis Ray has done those last five games as Amrick Fields has been out. He has been very solid with 12.7 rebounds. Saturday against OU, Amrick Fields saw his teammate go off for 18 points. I'm looking forward to seeing him 100% next year on the field. See what he can do. He has battled through severe knee injuries it broke his hand earlier this year he missed several games and he's been out for the last six a little serious mismatch Isaiah Austin is they've got to take that ball inside Hudson Price and Thomas Monaco are trying to guard him Gore, nice dish. Shepard, though, doesn't get it to go. Gets his own miss. Anderson, a three. Kid can shoot, man. Yeah, he can. In a season with not many bright spots for TCU, Ken Anderson is honorable mention on the All Big 12 team, and he has been a silver lining. Very good season for Ken Anderson. Kenny Cherry rattles one home. Kenny Cherry made the Associated Press honorable mention all Big 12 team. Last four games, Kenny Cherry's been averaging 20 points per game. Third in the league in assists, third in assist to turnover. Monaco way off target. And a whistle and a foul. That one's going to be called on Rico Gathers, much to his surprise. But Kenny Cherry has these Bears on a roll right now. We're back after this from our friends at Phillips 66. It's 1.54 p.m. and 97 degrees. Officer Martinez is on the case. First sprinkles. 
Eric will see the light. A very tiny light. Jeff and his buddies will be saving their startup some coin by using their kickback rewards card. And we'll be here, fueling the neighborhood with performance gas, loyalty rewards, and just about everything else, like we have been for the past 80 years. Phillips 66, proud to be here. What are you guys doing? We're transferring our recorded shows over from the DVR. With the hopper from Dish, you can watch them anywhere you want. The hopper? Yeah, the hopper. The hopper. 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 Shut up! Hopper! Transfer recorded shows to your mobile devices and watch them anywhere with the hopper from Dish. Welcome back to Kansas City, where Baylor has a 34-21 lead over TCU. And coming up on our Studio 66 Halftime Report, we'll recap this first half with Brendan. We'll check out our classroom champions and also Brendan's bold predictions on what's going to transpire in the second half. Doug Bell, Brendan Manzer. Baylor's dominating the glass. Corey Jefferson is absolutely destroying TCU right now. Well, he has 12-7 and seven already here in the first half. He's played great the last 17 or seven games, averaging 17 points and nine rebounds. They're dominating the boards. They've got nine offensive rebounds. They've got a plus 14 advantage, shooting 55% from the floor. But yet, Reed, my question is to you, why are they not up by more than they are? It seems like they haven't been taking advantage of those opportunities against TCU and, and allowing them to hang in there a little bit. Dave and I just looked up at the clock, Brendan, and thought the exact same thing. Corey Jefferson and his teammates are dominating this game statistically. They have more offensive rebounds than TCU does total re rebounds. In fact, Corey Jefferson is out rebounding TCU all by himself. Wow. They're dominating points in the paint. And so you watch this game and the flow of it, and you think, well, Corey and his teammates, you know, they're up by 25. And you look up, and they're only up by 13. And TCU is still in this basketball game. One of the reasons is Anderson, who hits shots like that. Yeah, there's that nice little step back jumper. He's legit. I mean, he, he is absolutely as good as anybody in this league. Whoop. Austin lost the handle. Well, look at the mismatch inside. Monagle trying to guard Rico Gathers. <laughs> Royce O'Neal comes flying through for another rebound. 21 to 6, the rebound edge for Baylor. You're right. I mean, they should be up by 25 or 30 with all the numbers. Franklin gives it up, Austin. Yeah, and there's just no, no way for the Horn Frogs to stop that. They don't have the size inside. Well, right now they're playing a front line of 6 foot 6 inch Jarvis Ray and Thomas Monagle at 6 2. Yeah. Parrish a three no. And the little guys get the rebounds. Monaco kept it alive for Ray. It's still an 11 point game. Yeah. It's one of the things Trent Johnson has said about his team. He said, none of these guys have ever made any excuses. He said, I got Jarvis Ray playing out of position. He should be a two or a three, and he's had to play the four all year. He said, I got guys like you know, Thomas Monago coming in at 6'2", having to play in the post. Playing post. Yeah, it's playing 6 two. post. 6'2", 195. Yeah. And he said, they, but they don't make any excuses. And he goes, and they have played hard, despite the fact that they're 0-18 in this league. Not one of them has quit on them. Both teams are 
Just now in the bonus. Each team with 16 fouls this half. Cherry throws up a three. Nope. There's a push inside on O'Neal. He just pushed Christian Gore underneath the hoop. So Gore gets to shoot some free throws. He's a 78% free throw shooter. And you put the Horn Frogs at the line. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. All of a sudden, now they're going to get that lead under 10. You go into the locker room if you're TCU and you're within 10 of the Bears, and well, you look up and you go, huh? Well, we're in this game. Yeah. It's a tough miss, though, on the front end of a one and one. So Baylor's got the ball under two minutes to go. Now Baylor's got to get that ball inside to Rico Gathers. They've, they've got to attack the paint. We'll give and go. Jefferson loses the handle. Oh, good pass. Man, Anderson, he saw, he had eyes in the back of his head on that play. Now what he did is he took a dribble to the right and he dragged the defense with him. He saw Jarvis Ray down under the basket, but it was the one dribble that set that pass up. And they get the ball to Gathers. He gives it right back out. Cherry nails a three. Heslip got a piece of that one, but Ray got it back. No change of possession, so the shot clock did not reset. Anderson almost lost the handle going in. Now O'Neill's got it. You're never unhappy to not have the lead going into the locker room. But if there's ever a team that's kind of happy, it's the Horn Frogs right now. Yeah, I agree. Baylor 13 and 1 this year when leading at half. Jefferson. Anderson loses the handle. O'Neill fires up a long one at the buzzer. It goes off no good. So Baylor goes into their locker room. So does TCU, but Trent Johnson with one final word for one of the officials, Mark Whitehead, as uh, he looks in and says, well, I'm not sure we're getting all the calls. And yet, despite that, Baylor with only a 39-27 lead. Higher education is the key to solving issues for the future. Ten universities are making a difference. Welcome back to the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship from the Sprint Center in Kansas City. We're at halftime between Baylor and TCU. And Corey Jefferson with 12.7 rebounds in that first half as Baylor leads by a dozen. With Reed Geddes, I'm Dave Armstrong. Baylor, though, had nine turnovers in the first half. That allowed TCU to stay close. Yeah, points off turnovers kept TCU in the basketball game, but it came down to what we thought it was, a points in the paint and rebounding. Let's check out the Shelter Insurance first half highlights. Uh, Brady Heslip, a good first half, shooting the ball two or three behind the line. Corey Jefferson dominated this basketball game. Couch and lobs, attacking the basket. He had 12 points and seven rebounds, six offensive rebounds for TCU. Ken Anderson, we thought he would be good, and he has been. He had 10 points in the first half. Did a nice job of allowing his Horn Frogs to just kind of hang around in this basketball game. And right away, before we even get the ball inbounded, Kenny Cherry caught holding on to Kean Anderson, and he picks up his second foul. Oh, 
let's see. Starting the second half, if TCU doesn't do a little better job attacking this 2-3 zone than they did in the first half. Anderson had 10 points in the first half. Go along with three assists. Price with a spin move. Back out to Ray. Ball's loose and it's picked up by Royce O'Neal. Brandon Parrish had that rebound and brought it down around his ankles, allowed Brady Heslip to go down there and poke it loose. 23 to 9 reboundings. Differential for the Bears. Cherry can't get it to go, and good off balance rebound by Ray. Brendan Manzer had that bold prediction saying yeah. TCU would get within single digits. What do you think? Mm, it's bold. <laughs> they don't have real far to go. In fact, that can do it, but it's way off target. Now, Ray tracks it down all the way back out to Anderson. Three-pointer, got it. Boy, Kean Anderson is deadly. Well, just a little bit of separation created by the pass fake for Kean Anderson. Well, there we go, single digits. That's it, he did it. That's our boy, Brendan Manzer. Inside to Austin, he had really good position. When you get two feet inside the paint before you even get the ball. And your 7-1? Yeah. Kavar Shepard's been really quiet. Mm -hmm. You know, he was quiet and kind of deferred to his teammates earlier in the year. The last couple of weeks, he has been very aggressive and assertive, but not so much here tonight. Shepard only three points, four rebounds in this game. Here comes Cherry. Kind of got caught in the air, lucky to not have a turnover there. But Jefferson flushes home two more. He's got 14. And a quick timeout for Trent Johnson. Now, Isaiah Austin so good in that high-low game. He stand out there on the perimeter with the ball up above his head and finding his teammate Corey Jefferson for yet another dunk for the Baylor Bears, keeping the Horn Frogs at arm distance. What does everything mean to you? With the Quicksilver Cashback Card from Capital One, it means unlimited 1.5% cashback on everything you purchase every day. It doesn't mean everything as long as you buy it at the gas station. It doesn't mean everything until you hit your cashback limit. It means earn 1.5% cashback on every purchase, every place, every occasion, all over creation. That's what everything should mean. So consider, what's in your wallet? Huh. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Yep. Everybody knows that. Well, did you know the ancient pyramids were actually a mistake? Uh oh. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Championship Week, presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. Welcome back to the Sprint Center in Kansas City for the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. Oklahoma State behind Markel Brown, Marcus Smart. They get by Texas Tech. They'll meet Kansas tomorrow in the 1:30 game. The 11:30 game is Iowa State and Kansas State. 
Oklahoma waiting the winner of this one. Baylor right now in charge and Texas and West Virginia. What a day we'll have tomorrow here at the Sprint Center for quarterfinal action. Four great games. And you consider out of the eight teams that are going to play tomorrow, if Baylor wins here, and we expect them to, but it's not over yet. If Baylor wins here, we're going to have seven teams that are locks for the NCAA tournament and another one that still has a chance. Well, and it's nice to be in a position where nobody's going to play their way out of the NCAA tournament tomorrow. The teams that are in it are going to stay in it regardless of win or lose. O'Neill goes coast to coast. Yeah. Trent Johnson just so frustrated. His team fights. They cut it to nine and then they give up a dunk, another dunk, and then a transition layup. Six straight points by the Bears. Corey Jefferson has 14 points. He's made five field goals. Four of them have been dunks. He's four of four in dunks, one of six on non-dunks. Hmm. Shepard pulls out, and that was partially blocked. Get another block for Isaiah Austin, 97 on the year, and he comes to the other end and scores easily. Well, that's good hustle at both yeah, ends. Yeah, that's what's so enticing about Isaiah Austin. He blocks it on one end, and they can get out and outrun everybody down the floor on the other. So now eight straight points by the Bears, pulling away. Problem for the Horn Frogs, they get too far down. They don't have enough offense to really come back. Whipped inside, Ray, now Price, three-pointer. Got it. Hudson Price, only a 23% three-point shooter. That's something I think he'll improve next year. Just his seventh made three-point field goal this season. Well, that was a tough pass to get through, and there's another dunk. That's five? Make that five dunks. <laughs> Corey Jefferson. Just crazy rebounding, 26 to 11. Mm. Good wraparound pass by Keon Anderson, and Kavar Shepard flushes one home. That might be Kavar Shepard's first dunk of the season. He has gone dunkless all the way up until mid-February he didn't have one. Mm. How surprising is that? Jefferson. Still can't find the range from outside Dunkland. And a foul on Austin over the back. So again, it's the inside play of the Bears. They're frustrating the Horn Frogs. And we're back after this from our friends at Phillips 66. It's 4.22 p.m. and Marcus is lost. Really lost. Frank needs coffee now. Kristen just got her license. And it shows. Gus will get a hankering for ice cream sandwich. And when that happens, we'll be here, fueling the neighborhood with performance gas and just about everything else, like we have been for the past 80 years. Phillips 66, proud to be here. Today, huh, Willie? Yep. Oh, check out the German V8. Good car. Our feeder zane. Ooh, 64 Dream Car. At Shelter Insurance, we insure all your favorite rides. Oh, classic convertible. And have since 1946. Sweet pickup. Hiya, Muggsy. Yo. From Hot Wheels to hybrids, we've got you covered. Hey, mailman. Love those shoes. Hey, where you going? Shelter Insurance. We're your shield. We're your shelter. 
Top 66 Big 12 Tournament, part of Championship Week, presented by Dick Sporting Goods. And now Baylor pulling away from TCU, 49 to 35. And they pulled away kind of the way they started this basketball game, dominating inside, and Corey Jefferson dunking everything that comes off the rim. Isaiah Austin Block had shots on one end, getting out and running on the other. Just a complete domination in the paint by the Baylor Bears. Baylor right now shooting 54% for the game. And you can see in the second half, even better than that. Austin and Jefferson having their way inside. Jefferson leading the way for Baylor with 16 points. I said that may have been Kavar Shepard's first dunk of the year. I stand corrected. That was his fourth or one less than Jefferson has tonight. <laughs> Good pass from Parrish. Gore, another three. Yeah, he's got three of them here tonight. He's had ten all year until tonight, and he has three. Transfer from Brown University, and nice shooting by Christian Gore. Shouldn't come as any surprise coming from Brown that he is on the academic All-Big 12 team. And no, that is not a surprise. <laughs> that would not be a bold pick. It's almost, no, no, it's not. It's almost a given, isn't it? Extra pass to Ray, got it from the short corner. Back within single digits. Yeah. And a timeout for Scott Drew. A 10 2 run for TCU. And this is that mental challenge you were yeah. talking about earlier. Now, Scott Drew's team, they get out to a lead and then they let them back in. And they get out to a lead and they let them back in. And now, that was the best ball movement by TCU. They bring the ball on one side, swing it around the other, all the way down to the short corner. And anytime they've gotten the ball down to the short corner, they've been successful. The time before that got to the short corner, caused the defense to contract and kick it out to Christian Gore out there all by himself. Nine points for Gore. His career high is only 14. And remember, in the two previous games against the Bears, he scored a total of three points. And you saw it that one angle, I loved it, because you could really see the zone having to move with that ball movement of TCU. You know, you've got to make the defense contract and expand, and that's what TCU done, has done much better the last two minutes of this game. Tonight's game brought to you by Puerto Rico Tourism Company. Live your own star vacation story. Puerto Rico, the all-star island. Visit seapuertorico.com. Nice little hook shot by Isaiah Austin. Well, that's 7-1 over 6-6, six, six, and Isaiah Austin doing a nice job of not doing anything fancy, just turning those long arms and shooting a jump hook. You can see Scott Drew out of that timeout. Said, let's go back to our strength. Let's go inside. Here comes Franklin on the run with Cherry. Good ball fake. Franklin's wide open, decided not to take it. And a three-pointer from the wing, no good by O'Neal. And it goes out of bounds. And a foul on Austin. Now that was terrific ball movement by Baylor. I mean, that ball was a hot potato swing and side to side. Scott Drew not happy with Isaiah Austin getting a foul called. And that was the right call, but a good possession nonetheless. Third foul on Austin. Three team fouls on the Bears this half, none on TCU. That's a two-pointer for Ray. So Jarvis Ray up into double figures again. In his last six games now, he's averaged 12 points. Cherry can't find the range after that career-high 29, just not falling for him here tonight. Just two of five from the field. Off the basket and a foul. This one on Rico gathers. And a chance to cut the lead to six. TCU's gotten to nine a couple of times. And now things are starting to get really interesting. That's pretty good defense by Rico gathers. I didn't see where his feet were. I don't know whether he was in the no charge zone, but Christian Gore in the air. That's a good call. So three fouls on Rico Gathers. Remember, I just told you three on Austin. 
Torian Prince and Corey Jefferson will take their places. You know, Dave, you could almost feel this type of game coming. Mm -hmm. Baylor started so strong, and they started almost perfect from the three-point line and attacking and just jumped all over TCU to start this game. And you could just feel them letting up a little bit and losing their focus and in turnovers increasing, and they have let the Horn Frogs back into this game. They have, and, and, you know, in the first two games against them this year, they won by an average of almost 30 points per game. So... Mentally, it is tough to get up for another contest against the team you've dominated so much against. Jefferson, Kavar oh, Shepard trying to hold his ground, but another dunk for Jefferson. Six dunks for Corey Jefferson. That was a man-sized dunk right there. I mean, he just turned and manhandled Kavar Shepard. He has seven field goals, six dunks. Shepard. Around shot. Nice move. Well, Kamal Shepard's aggressive and assertive. He has got a nice skill set. Mm -hmm. Shepard now with nine. <laughs> Jefferson keeping it alive. There's O'Neill. Yeah, it in one. Well, that was all Corey yeah. Jefferson. Corey Jefferson should get an offensive rebound and an assist for that effort. So again, Corey Jefferson, look at the long arm of the law here for Jefferson and O'Neal, the beneficiary. What are you guys doing? We're transferring our recorded shows over from the DVR. With the Hopper from Dish, you can watch them anywhere you want. The Hopper? Yeah, the Hopper. The Hopper. 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 Transfer recorded shows to your mobile devices and watch them anywhere with The Hopper from Dish. Your financial goals can seem far away at first, but with the right tools and a little patience, they get closer, no matter the conditions. As an investment management leader, the principal has more than 130 years of experience to help you reach your dreams. Learn ways to build, grow, and protect your financial future at principal.com slash planning center and contact your advisor. Corey Jefferson tonight, he came to play inside, and Jefferson, he has seven field goals in this game. You're going to see six of them. They're all of the dunk variety. 18 points for Jefferson, 10 rebounds. So it gives him another double-double. That's now five double-doubles in his last eight games. I like that one the most. That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Six dunks in this basketball game, and fifth double-double out of the last eight, like you said. And Corey Jefferson is playing like we expected him to play all year long. So here is Royce O'Neal. He completes the three-point play, makes it a 10-point lead for Baylor. They continue to keep TCU at arm's length, although the Horn Frogs have pulled it within six in this game. Iowa 
nice touch by O'Neill. It'll stay with TCU with 15 to shoot it. You know, one of our principal edges to this basketball game for TCU is Ken Anderson and who else? And we thought that it may be Kavar Shepard, but it, it has been Jarvis Ray who stepped up and had a very nice game. 12 points. Ken Anderson with 13. And Christian Gore. Yeah. Surprising 11 points for Gore. Poked away. Franklin gives it up. Here comes Prince. And boy, Jarvis Ray was climbing his back. And a foul on Ray. Well, the good hands by Brady Heslip and you know, Jarvis Ray almost made a spectacular play. But for the fact that Torian Prince slowed down at the last second, that would have been a nice clean block. With Jefferson coming on, less playing time maybe for Prince, and he's averaged just two points in his last six games. In the first meeting, he had 23 points in Waco. That was a career high for him. Just two points in this game. And he misses both free throws. Yeah, but there's O'Neal. Haslip for three. And there's Prince. Just dominating the boards. Absolutely manhandling TCU on the offensive glass. Now you give a team this many shots at it, you know, on the third possession, something bad is going to happen for you. Well, TCU has 15 total rebounds. Baylor has 14 offensive rebounds and 31. They've more than doubled the rebound total of TCU in this game. You don't have to break down the game much past that. I mean, you just cannot get out rebounded that significantly and have a chance to win the basketball game. Well, TCU this year in Big 12 play alone has averaged a minus 14 rebounds. Ooh, man. That will get you to 0 and 18. Yep. Our Shepard will go to the line. Nobody asked me to make a bold pick. Yeah. I'm going to make one. All right. Next year, Kavar Shepard is going to average 15 points and 10 rebounds. He is going to be one of the best post players in the Big 12. Mm. That would about double his production from this year. There's not a reason in the world that he cannot be one of the most dominant players. He's he can be good offensively. He can be good de defensively. He can block shots. Trent Johnson's hoping you're right. And Jefferson not falling from outside of dunk range as he misses from eight feet. Shepard, that was a tough shot there. Prince. Oh, that was a slick move. Now, Prince could almost play this game in the dark with those shoes. <laughs> yeah, he could. <laughs> I'm not real good with the color coordination, but I'm not sure that goes with green and gold. Yeah. Short corner shot that's way off target. Struggled a little bit with his shooting range of late, but boy, he hit a big one. Remember the one he hit in Stillwater that oh, yeah. helped the Bears win the game against the Cowboys? And look at the 10 1 run, and he just wonders TCU now kind of out of gas. Got it to six. Yeah. When you look up and they're down 16. That's a foul on Jefferson. That'll send Kavar Shepard to the line. We invite you to play basket pong at Phillips 66. Chance to win prizes instantly and shoot for $66,000. Phillips 66, proud to be here. So are we. With Reed Geddes, I'm Dave Armstrong. Proud and honored to be a part of the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. As Kavar Shepard goes to the line. He's got 10 points now to go along with five rebounds.
the highest ranked recruit in TCU history. He has got a skill set. I mean, he's six foot ten inches. He runs well. He's bouncy. He's got nice touch. His post moves. He still needs to work on getting his body. His balance is not very good. Sometimes he turns, and his upper body and his lower body aren't doing the same thing. But well, that's just a young kid. He's going to get better and better. I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm high on his potential. Jefferson got that one to go. A nice little drop off pass that time by Royce O'Neal. Pass through the pocket of the screen. A little bounce pass to Corey Jefferson. 20 now for Jefferson to go along with those 10 rebounds. Anderson's been silent this half. That went off of the knee of Torian Prince, and it will belong to TCU. and he's been stuck at 13 points for a while. 21. And now foul here is on Brady Heslip. We're back after this from our friends at Phillips 66 with Baylor leading at 65-49. It's 1.54 p.m. and 97 degrees. Officer Martinez is on the case. First sprinkles. Monica will get the message. Eric will see the light, a very tiny light. And when this happens, we'll be here, fueling the neighborhood with performance gas and just about everything else, like we have been for the past 80 years. Phillips 66, proud to be here. I don't know who they are, but I love them. Oh, me too, because I went there. I didn't just hop on the bandwagon. Save the speech, kid. Sure, it's your Cinderella story, but this time of year, everyone gets invited to the ball. So share some school spirit and teach them that fight song of yours. Where the mighty Ospreys. Grab a seat. The game is on. Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, spear, sports. Mighty Ospreys. Soar, 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 soar. Yeah! Mine was earned in Korea in 1953. Afghanistan in 2009. Orbiting the moon in 1971. Once it's earned, USAA auto insurance is often handed down from generation to generation because it offers a superior level of protection and because USAA's commitment to serve current and former military members and their families is without equal. Begin your legacy. Get an auto insurance quote. USAA, we know what it means to serve. Pod, North Pacific. Fish, non-specific. Huh. Never been there. You want great fish? It's gotta be Wendy's. 100% premium cod with a light panko breading. Now that's better. Cod. North Pacific. Fish. Non-specific. Huh. Never been there. You want great fish? It's gotta be Wendy's. 100% premium cod with a light panko breading. Now that's better. Welcome you back to the Sprint Center for the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. Baylor leading at 65-49. Let's take a look at our quick stats brought to you by LifeLock, relentlessly protecting your identity. Well, you take a look here at the rebounds and points in the paint. We told you those were going to be two keys to this game. And Baylor plus 18 rebounding and plus 24 points in the paint for Isaiah Austin and his front court teammate of Corey Jefferson, Rico Gathers. Torian Prince. Well, that's domination. Yeah, it is. Jefferson getting a breather right now, sitting over there with 20 points, 10 rebounds. Here's Kean Anderson. Front end of a one and one is missed. And he's an 85% free throw shooter. Only three team fouls on TCU this half. They're in the bonus because seven on the Bears. Oh! 
Well, Rico Gathers has got a six foot two inch guy on him. They're not giving him the ball. Haslip fires up a three that's well short. He hit his first couple and missed his last two. Not a lot of opportunities from three point range as Baylor is concentrated on getting the ball inside. Good pass. Good block. Calling goaltending now. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know either. Boy, that was a nice block. There was a little bit of separation. I think the official just thought if there's that much separation, it's got to be goaltend. And I don't know about that one. Looked like the ball was still going up. Yeah, I think that's a good block. So count the basket for Kavar Shepard. Go gathers. Oh boy. One of the things we're seeing too in this game for Baylor, they've had a 10 to 15 point lead pretty much throughout. And they have more depth than what we saw from yeah. Oklahoma State. So they've been able to rest a lot of guys yeah. in this game. I don't think anybody's going to play more than 20, 25 minutes. Whereas Oklahoma State, they had to leave their starters in until there were about four minutes to go in the contest. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Baylor has eight players that average over 15 minutes per game. They get, on average, get about 25 points per game off the bench. And so the depth and balance, I think, is a good point, especially in a tournament where you've got to win four games in four days if you're the Baylor Bears. Rico Gathers just picked up his fourth foul, and Shepard will go back to the line. 12 points, four of six from the line. Gathers will come out. Jefferson will come back in. We're also going to see Kenny Cherry and Royce O'Neal. Principal Edge, you know, who was going to step up and help Ken Anderson and Kavar Shepard now with 13 points and Jarvis Ray with 12 points, Christian Gore with 11 points. And so the scoring hasn't really been the problem as much as the lack of defense and rebounding is what has gotten the Horn Frogs in a hole that they just can't quite seem to climb out of. And Anderson, by his standards, has sort of had just an average game, only 13 points for Anderson so far. Austin, quick double on him, trying to sneak the ball through. Can't. Here comes Keenan Anderson, and he's fouled by Franklin. That'll send Anderson to the line. Thomas Monago at 6-2 is guarding 7-foot, 1-inch Isaiah Austin and doing a pretty good job of it. When he got down low. He's got his body up against his back, and he got a double team down there. But Thomas giving Trent Johnson just about everything he's got. And then some. This time Anderson gets the bonus. Sometimes when you have a mismatch like that, your tendency is let's just run down to the block and throw it to you. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes the best way to get open is come up and do a pick and roll and force someone like Thomas Monaco to come out, you know, hedge on an on the ball screen and then recover when the ball's up above the rim. <laughs> Well, Austin, he got inside that time. 13 points now for Austin. 40 points in the paint for Baylor. And this is a team that really is a pretty good perimeter team, too, the Bears. And yet tonight they've concentrated on getting that ball inside, realizing they had a huge edge in that area. Anderson sealed off. Three-pointer, Jarvis Ray. That is just his fifth three-point field goal of the season. Four for 28 coming into this game. 15 points. Again, just three shy of a career high for him. Pretty good percentage tonight. TCU, eight of 16 from three-point range and a whistle and a foul inside. Only the fourth team foul, though, on TCU this half. 
Well, Thomas Monaco kind of grabbing and holding and shoving, and the official looked at him and said, what are you doing? If I was Thomas, I'd say, everything I can think of, partner. <laughs> One thing I can do. <laughs> everything well, I can think of. What do you expect? <laughs> the guy's got a, a foot advantage on me. Wingspan of an albatross, <laughs> about 7'6". What do you mean, what am I doing? Double-double for Royce O'Neal, who's played the most minutes for Baylor tonight. And then at the other end, you got Kenny Cherry kind of out top with Monagle. Good pass. And Kavar Shepard. Jose Austin went for the block, didn't get it. Look at Shepard now with 16. That's a new career high for him. Yeah, back within nine again. That just won't go away. Kind of speaks to the way they've played all year. Despite an 0-18 Big 12 record, this is a team that really just doesn't quit. This is a microcosm of the way they've played the season. Jerry, nope. Gives TCU an opportunity. Ray for three. And look at that. How about that? Thomas Monagle comes in with an offensive rebound in the land of the Giants. So TCU does not go away. Trent Johnson's Horn Frogs have a chance within nine. Headed out of town for those big away games? Then book a clean, comfortable room for the lowest price of any national chain at Motel 6. That's what you call a classic layup. Count it. We'll leave the light on for you. Official economy lodging partner of the Big 12. This is the Quicksilver Cashback card from Capital One. It's not the juggle a bunch of rotating categories card. It's not the sign up for rewards each quarter card. It's the no games, no messing around, no earning limit having. Do I look like I'm joking? Turbo boosting heavyweight champion of the world! Cashback card. This is the Quicksilver Cashback Card from Capital One. Unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase, everywhere, every single day. Now tell me, what's in your wallet? Huh, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Everybody knows that. Well, did you know that when a tree falls in the forest and no one's around, it does make a sound? Oh! <clears throat> Geico. Little help here? I need proof of insurance. That's my Geico digital insurance ID card. Got all my pertinence on it and such. Works for me. Turn to the camera. Uh, actually, I think my eyes might... Next! Digital insurance ID cards. Just to tap away on the Geico app. What are you guys doing? We're transferring our recorded shows over from the DVR. With the Hopper from Dish, you can watch them anywhere you want. The Hopper? Yeah, the Hopper. The Hopper. 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 Hopper! Transfer recorded shows to your mobile devices and watch them anywhere with the Hopper from Dish. Headed out of town for those big away games? Then book a clean, comfortable room for the lowest price of any national chain at Motel 6. That's what you call a classic layup. Count it. We'll leave the light on for you. Official economy lodging partner of the Big 12. Tonight's Big 12 Network game has been brought to you by Phillips 66, proud to be here. Buffalo Wild Wings, the official hangout for NCAA March Madness. Motel 6, the official economy lodging partner of Big 12 fans everywhere. Dish. Wendy's new ciabatta bacon cheeseburger available at participating Wendy's for limited time. Dick's Sporting Goods, every season starts at Dick's. And by Bonage. That's all part of the college basketball experience, which is tied to the Sprint Center here. It is an awesome college basketball museum, if you will. And if you're coming to Kansas City for this, you need to go on over to the college basketball experience as well and check out the great history yeah, of college basketball. It's phenomenal. Well, our Motel 6 sixth man of the game, Christian Gore, who's having himself quite a night. Three for three from three-point range, three rebounds, and 11 points, which is only three shy of a career high. Well, here is Thomas Monagle at the line. Another academic All-Big 12 performer. 
McCormick's dad is the golf coach at TCU, a longtime basketball assistant to legend Jim Killingsworth, who coached at TCU for years and years. Killer. The Killer Frogs. Hmm. An eight-point game with 3.26 remaining. And the starting five is out there right now for Baylor. Jefferson loses the handle. Here comes Anderson. He splits the defense. Nice dish to Ray who can't get it to go. Boy, point blank range. I don't know how that ball stayed out. Here's the danger of approaching this game like Baylor has. It's almost like you're standing at the doorway and you're flipping the switch on and off. Yeah. Turn it on, turn it off. But well, one time you go there and you flip it and you think you turned it on and it didn't come on and suddenly you got problems. Jarvis Ray! Wow. They better flip the switch back yeah, on in a hurry, they Baylor. They better flip it. It's a six-point contest. Boy, the turnovers for the Bears have kept TCU in this contest, and Scott Drew wants a timeout. Thirteen turnovers for Baylor in this game. They've just gotten careless with the basketball, and they're not executing as well. They're not playing as hard. And you know, if you're Scott Drew, this game is such a challenge because you tell your guys, if you don't focus, we can lose this basketball game. You know, and they're looking at each other going, yeah, right. And we've played these guys twice. We've crushed them both times. And TCU now on a 14-4 run. And they've got this game down to six points with 2.20 to go. And the TCU's huddle, they're over there. They're believing they can win this game. The Bears, meanwhile, they've done a lot of good work of late, winning three in a row and seven of their last eight. To at least, you would think, put themselves into the NCAA tournament. Their BPI rank is 40. Their RPI is solid at 34. They're 9-9 nine and nine in conference play. I don't think we really need to talk about whether they're in or not in, but this would be a really bad loss, yeah, and, and it would leave a sour taste in the in the uh, face of the selection committee. So this is one where Baylor's just got to finish this off. You replace that Texas Tech down at the bottom, and you add TCU. This is a Baylor team that has eight top 50 wins. Only three teams in the country have more. Kansas, Arizona, and Iowa State have more top 50 wins than the Baylor Bears. And Austin, knowing he's got Monaco on him, just takes him right down low and posts him up and a foul on Monaco. If that's Jarvis Ray's fault, you cannot leave Thomas Monaco down there. Look at the dribbles. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, five dribbles and then the double team comes and your teammate, your 6-2 teammates are just getting back down farther and farther and farther. And as soon as Isaiah Austin puts that ball on the floor, somebody needs to be doubling it and eating that thing up. A little breathing room now for the Bears with under two minutes to go. 16 points for Austin. Michael Williams gets it across midcourt. Keenan Anderson sneaking along that baseline. Timeout taken by Trent Johnson. And again, the winner of this game will take on Oklahoma to start our night session tomorrow. Oklahoma State winning earlier today as they beat Texas Tech, so they get to take on the top-seeded Kansas Jayhawks. Iowa State and Kansas State will start things off tomorrow on what should be a fantastic quarterfinal Thursday. And then the nightcap is Texas and West Virginia. Yeah, four terrific basketball games. And the Kansas Oklahoma State game will be so interesting without Joel Embiid and the impact that he makes on the game, not only offensively and rebounding, but his defensive presence and not having that in the middle protecting the rim suddenly makes it a what was going to be an interesting game really fascinating. A lot of pressure on Jabari Trailer and Tariq Black to step up and fill the gap and missing mm -hmm. Joel Embiid. And a whistle and a foul on Austin. Now TCU is in the double bonus. That's four fouls on Austin. Shepard has been good at the free throw line, six for eight so far. 
Shepard already with a career high 16 points in this game. You jinxed him. He left his heels down on the ground. He needs to come up on his toes and extend that long body when he shoots that basketball. There go the heels. And get the ball out of the net. <laughs> That's all it takes? Just that? No, but it helps. Uh, game clock, shot clock did not start. And now Trey Johnson wants a timeout. So while they settle the clock issue, Trey Johnson's going to huddle up. Now keep this in mind, the Horn Frogs have not yet put Baylor in the bonus. They only have five team fouls. So if he's going to work on the strategy of fouling, he's got to get busy quickly. Well, Kenny Cherry has struggled this year at the free throw line. He's coming off that game where he was perfect eight for eight, but he only shoots 58%. Corey Jefferson struggles at the free throw line, you know, statistically at 63%. He's been so good in this game, but that's mainly when he's dunking the basketball. Right. So there's some candidates on the floor. If you're Trent Johnson over there, you're looking statistically, assistant coaches are saying, here, if he catches the ball, foul him, foul him. Don't foul Brady Heslip. And so I assume that's what Trent Johnson's talking about. Absolutely. So you got to give TCU all kinds of credit yeah. for staying in this game. Baylor, meanwhile, you talked about it really in the first 10 minutes of this game, the mental challenge for them of staying focused. And they are they played in spurts where they played really good, gotten a 10, 15, 20 point lead at one point, And then they've let TCU back into the contest. And so right now, TCU, I mean, it's an eight point advantage. You think if Baylor takes care of their business, they're going to move on. But they're not going to feel real good as their head hits the pillow tonight that they played their best basketball. No, I, I agree with that. I mean, I don't think they have at all. And it's a test. And you know what? Credit TCU. I mean, how many times could they have just checked it in and, you know, and said, let's just take it to the house? And they, they have just fought and fought and scratched. And, and they've made a game that we thought was going to be a blowout interesting. After Baylor now. Try to take up some time off that clock. And they've done that. Shot clock is under 10. Oh, Austin with the yeah, crossover yeah. dribble. Oh, my. How about that move? Are you kidding me? Crossover between the legs. Put that ball in the left hand. 7-1. That was gorgeous. 18 points for Isaiah Austin. And there goes Anderson in. No foul called as Anderson goes in for two more. That was a good no call. Rule of verticality. Isaiah Austin was straight up. And there's a foul. Now again, that will not put Baylor at the free throw line. Just resets the shot clock to 35. Watch Isaiah Austin put that ball between his legs and then oh. finish with the left hand. Oh, and that is beautiful. And Thomas Monaco's going, all right, that's just not fair. Yeah, that's right. Come on. Oh, come on. You know, I get a 7-1 guy out on the perimeter. I've got the advantage, oh. right? <laughs> Has slip. Fires up a three. O'Neal is there to pick it up. Well, that should do it. Double-double for Royce O'Neal. Double-double for Corey Jefferson. 15 offensive rebounds for the Baylor Bears. Oh. That was blocked. And count that. Another goaltend charge against Isaiah Austin. Take a look at our Phillips 66 player of the game. And again, Jefferson, a double-double. That's the... Fifth double-double in the last eight games for Jefferson. Well, the, while the rest of his teammates have kind of flipped that light switch we talked about on and off, Corey Jefferson has dominated this game from the get-go. So it looks now with only 18 seconds remaining that Baylor's going to move on to take on Oklahoma tomorrow night. Yeah, Corey Jefferson tonight has been very active. He has stayed down right around that basket. and. Boy, every time he's picked it up, he has finished, and he's finished strong. He's finished with power. He's finished through contact. He's done a nice job of rebounding in position and rebounding out of position. Well, you look at the three bigs for Baylor. Jefferson, 8 for 16 with 20 points. Austin, 8 for 12 with 18 points. And O'Neal, 14 points, 6 of 7 shooting. 
Rico gathers, meanwhile, only had four points and was only two for four and was in foul trouble. Haslip loses it. Three-pointer off, no good. Tipped out of bounds by Shepard. And with 3.6 seconds to go, the TCU season will come to an end. So the Horn Frogs, with a loss here, will be their 19th straight, and they will finish the season at 9-21. And, and Trent Johnson just taking the time to get his seniors out of there, Monagal and Ray, and thank them for their efforts. So the Baylor Bears survive and move on. A 76-68 win over the Horn Frogs, and now Baylor takes on Oklahoma, two of the hottest teams in the Big 12. Well, that sets up our brackets exactly like everybody expected to be.